I have a new video for you guys because we need to talk about what happened between Kesha and Dr. Luke. Their decade-long battle played out in the limelight and in the courtroom. During that time, we found out a lot about how dark and deceptive the music industry is. Kesha was taken advantage of by a manipulative man whose power was unmatched in Hollywood. The fact that she's still standing after what he put her through is outstanding. We're taking a deep dive into this case, the Free Kesha Movement, and the man known as Dr. Luke. So let's get into it. <laughs> Before we get into this video, here is a quick message from our sponsor. Growing up, cereal was one of my favorite treats to eat as a kid, but I had to give it up when I realized that it was full of sugar and junk that you really shouldn't eat. Lately, I've been trying to take better care of myself, and Magic Spoon cereal is a must. Magic Spoon has 0 grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only 4 net grams of carbs in each serving. Also only 140 calories. The cereals come in a variety of flavors, including cocoa, we've got fruity, there's also frosted, peanut butter, cinnamon, and blueberry. I love that I can enjoy cereal again and feel great about it. It's healthy yet delicious, and it tastes just like regular cereal from your childhood, but super nutritious. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it for yourself today. And be sure to use the code S-L-O-A-N for $5 off your order or go to magicspoon.com slash Sloan. And Magic Spoon is so confident with their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for whatever reason, they will refund your money back no questions asked. So click the link below and use code Sloan for $5 off or visit magicspoon.com slash S-L-O-A-N for your $5 off and enjoy. I know a lot of you guys have been patiently waiting for this video, so let's go ahead and dive into it. Kesha Rose Sebert is an American singer and songwriter. She's better known as Kesha with a dollar sign in her name, but she actually dropped the dollar sign after getting out of rehab in January 2014. She just didn't feel like it fit with her image anymore. But anyways, she was born in Los Angeles and moved to Nashville when she was four years old. She grew up with her mother, Phoebe, who was a longtime songwriter. She actually had a publishing deal in Nashville, and that's why they made the big move. The most successful song that Phoebe ever wrote was titled Old Flames Can't Hold a Candle to You, which was originally recorded by Joe Sun and then later on by Dolly Parton. Throughout this video, you guys will see that Kesha has a strong relationship with her mother Phoebe, and it seems like maybe Kesha gets some of her musical abilities from her mother, like her songwriting skills. But before we get into Kesha's career, I do want to mention that actually Kesha had a moment on The Simple Life, which was a show with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. She was 18 years old at the time, and she premiered in an episode from September 2005, and pretty much her mother Phoebe was having some issues trying to find a man, and Nicole and Paris and Kesha interviewed some guys to see who would be the best fit for her mother. Hi, sexy. His name is Rob. Are you a cowboy? No, I'm an investment banker, actually. Do you like to dance? I gotta save a horse, ride a cowboy, right? Yeah. Yes. So if this was your mom, though. No. I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> Thank you, sexy. At this point in Kesha's life, that was pretty much the first taste of Hollywood. Then somehow she got into contact with Dr. Luke. It's not exactly clear how these two met, but he convinced her to leave Nashville and move to LA. Kesha was only 18 at this time. She was still in high school, so she left her education to go to Los Angeles and she was determined to start a music career. Before we get any further in this story, I do want to introduce you guys to Dr. Luke because we haven't properly talked about who he is. Lucas Gottwald, professionally known as Dr. Luke, Tyson Tracks, and Made in America, is an American record producer, songwriter, and singer. His professional music career began in the late night television sketch comedy SNL as its house band's lead guitarist in 1997. He also produced remixes for artists 
artists such as Bon Jovi and Grave Diggas. He came into the music prominence in 2004 for producing Kelly Clarkson's single Since You've Been Gone, which was a huge hit at that time and a huge success for Dr. Luke and his career. So I guess when he heard about 18-year-old Kesha, he saw her as a money-making machine and wanted to give her an opportunity. So she moved to LA in September, but then in October, that's when everything goes dark. So in October 2005, Dr. Luke brings Kesha along to Nikki Hilton's birthday party. Keep in mind, Kesha is still an 18-year-old girl, so this older producer is taking her to a party for what reason? This all went down at Paris. Hilton's home, but there aren't too many photographs from that date. I guess back in 2005, there just weren't a lot of images being uploaded to the internet. So I can't find any footage or pictures of Kesha there. But according to Phoebe and Kesha, supposedly Dr. Luke presented a sober pill to Kesha, which ended up being a drug known as GHB. After she took this drug, he supposedly took her back to his hotel room, and at that point, he R worded her. Kesha's mother, Phoebe, says that she got a phone call from Kesha after that night where Kesha described waking up without any clothing on in Luke's hotel room. In the lawsuit, Kesha was quoted telling her mother, Mom, I don't know where I am. I think we had, you know what? I'm sore and sick. I don't know where my clothes are. I think I need to go to the hospital. Kesha ultimately did not go to the hospital, but Kesha's mother claims that Kesha told her, Mom, I just want to sing. I don't want to be a, you know, a, a victim of this. I just want to get my music out. I didn't follow my instincts. Another theme you'll notice throughout this video is that it seems like a lot of these artists are scared of men like Dr. Luke. They're scared of those top record label people and I believe that Kesha was scared to go and try to speak out about Dr. Luke because she's just trying to get her music career going. I mean, she's been in LA for less than a month. She doesn't want to get blacklisted already, which is such a horrific way of thinking, but I totally understand why she felt that way. That brings us to 2006. A year passes by without Kesha releasing any music under Dr. Luke's label. So then she signs with a management company called Das Communications. They represent Black Eyed Peas and John. On legend, so they were hoping that maybe they can get Kesha signed to a major label. Once Kesha signs with Das, she actually adds the dollar symbol into her name and she starts developing her vibe. But I want to introduce you guys to this man, David Allen Sonnenberg, because he is the CEO of Das. As you guys can tell, he used his own initials as the name of the brand. And his management company was pretty successful at one point, managing a bunch of stars. I can't find much about the company anymore. I don't believe it exists, but this is an important name to keep in mind because they're going to sue Kesha. In 2008, despite Daz claiming they got Kesha a record deal with Warner Brothers, she decides to leave Daz and go back to work with Dr. Lou. Kesha agrees to have Dr. Luke bring her contract over to RCA Records, a Sony music entertainment label, for distribution of future albums and singles. So Kesha left Das and Warner Brothers to go to RCA and Dr. Luke. And actually later on, Kesha and Das claim that Dr. Luke coerced Kesha into leaving Das. Actually, Kesha once told her mother, Dr. Luke just called me and I have 24 hours to fire my lawyer and my managers and go back with him. Anytime I get a contract, he's going to come forward and say, he basically owns me. What do I do? Which that's extremely manipulative to go and hit up this this girl who's extremely passionate about her music and trying to get her music out there. Tell her she's got 24 hours to fire everyone and come onto your team. I mean, imagine the pressure she was feeling. It turns out in 2009, Kesha made the right decision by going back with Dr. Luke, at least for the short term, because she was featured on her first song. She wasn't credited at all, but Flo Rida came out with a song right around. And actually, Kesha was in the studio and they realized they needed a female voice, so they added her onto the song. Again, she never got credit and was never paid for that hit. And it was a hit because Flo Rida popped off after that song.
that same year in 2009, Kesha finally gets her own song. After nearly five years of artist development, Kesha releases her hit TikTok. Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Hey, what up, girl? Grab my glasses, I'm out the door, I'm gonna hit this city. It goes on to spend nine weeks at number one, and her first album, Animal, also debuts at number one in January 2010, selling 152,000 copies. At this point in Kesha's life, she was at the peak in her career. I mean, she just dropped her first album. It's a hit. Everyone is singing TikTok, talking about brushing their teeth with a bottle of Jack. But in 2010, things start going downhill because Das Communications sees how successful Kesha is doing, and they want in on that. They actually sue Kesha for $14 million. They also go on to sue Dr. Luke for $12 million more. So they're trying to sue both of them for a combined $26 million. That brings us to 2011, and Kesha was actually deposed for this lawsuit, so she had to go in and tell authorities what has been going on. And actually, as early as 2005, Kesha alerted people in her career and personal life that Dr. Luke had engaged in certain unethical and unlawful actions against her, and she did not want Dr. Luke to be part of her career going forward. But however, in a deposition for the Das case that was partially unsealed in 2014, Kesha actually testifies under oath that Dr. Luke never made any type of advances to her or gave her any drugs to force her to do it. Good morning, Ms. Siebert. Good morning. Um, have you ever had your deposition taken before? No. I haven't. Have you ever appeared in court before? I mean, I've had, like, parking tickets okay. and stuff. Now, is there any reason why your deposition cannot go forward at this time? No. Are you on any medications that would impair your ability to understand my questions and give truthful and accurate answers? No. Did you ever have an intimate relationship with Gottwald? No. I don't know what my mother told to David. I know that I, he, Dr. Luke never made advances at me. So. There were also depositions from her mother, who was heavily involved in the case. Were you ever told and at any time prior to when you met with David for the first time that Luke had had a relationship of any kind with your daughter? No. Had anyone told you that Gottwald had slipped Kesha a date drug? No. Were you told at any time prior to the meeting Das at the Chateau Marmont that Luke had given your daughter drugs of any kind? No. So with Kesha and her mother Phoebe saying none of this ever happened, who do we believe? I mean, what is going on here? But actually, lawyers reveal later on that Dr. Luke threatened Kesha's safety and livelihood at the time of the deposition. So I believe that Kesha wasn't actually telling the truth here because of the threats that Dr. Luke made against her. I mean, her body language alone should tell you that she's obviously uncomfortable here and probably not telling Telling the truth about the situation. In that same year, 2011, Dr. Luke actually co-founds his own label at Sony, and he's made CEO of that label. By contract, Kesha is actually moved over to Dr. Luke's part of Sony, something that she doesn't want to be a part of. And honestly, their relationship starts going downhill, and it gets even worse in 2012. Kesha was working on her sophomore album, Warrior, and actually a producer went to The New Yorker and revealed that there was a lot of tension between Kesha and Dr. Luke's relationship. They claimed that they were strained because Kesha wanted to expand her range to her rock roots, but Dr. Luke kept telling her to stick to poppy club hits. Actually, Kesha tweeted out that year that she was forced to sing the lyrics on Die Young, which faced a bunch of backlash. She later hints to Rolling Stone that she doesn't have creative control over her music. Even though Kesha's album Warrior did really well, she wasn't doing that great. And actually, in January 2014, she checks into rehab over an ED. Obviously, we cannot say those words on YouTube. It's like an eating issue. But nonetheless, she went there to go and seek help. 
But during her time there, she told the doctors that she was harmed by Dr. Luke and that he physically hurt her and drugged her. After completing treatment at this facility, that's when Kesha decided to drop the dollar sign from her name. She claims that she took the dollar sign out of her name because she realized that it was part of the facade and that it was a journey and she's happy that it was me in that part of her life, but then she turned a corner. You guys will learn throughout this video that Dr. Luke is one of the reasons why Kesha struggled with eating issues. Actually, Kesha's mom, Phoebe, went to people and told them that Dr. Luke told a friend of ours that he thought that she looked like a refrigerator in her latest video. And Dr. Luke talked a ton of crap about Kesha while working with Kesha. We'll actually reveal some of those released emails in a little bit, but let's talk about the breakthrough lawsuit that was filed in October 2014. So at this point in Kesha's life, she got out of rehab earlier this year, she's feeling stronger than ever, and she's ready to take legal action against Dr. Luke. So in this lawsuit, Kesha talks about that night at Nikki Hilton's birthday party and everything that Dr. Luke did to her. She also includes an incident where he supposedly thrashed his arms at her, which led her to run barefoot down the Pacific Coast Highway to escape him, which sounds terrifying. The lawsuit also accuses Dr. Luke of emotionally and psychologically harming Kesha. He would fat shame her, and actually his treatment towards Kesha led to her developing severe depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, social isolation, and panic attacks. She also asks in her lawsuit to be released from her record deal with Dr. Luke, claiming that he has breached his contract by treating her like this. But Dr. Luke wasn't having this. I mean, this man is a savage because the same day he actually files his own lawsuit against Kesha. And not only Kesha, but her mother and her manager, Jack, all for defamation. He's denying all of the allegations and claims it's a plot to extort him for money, noting that she testified in 2011 and she claims that none of this happened. And Dr. Luke isn't going down this easy. I mean, remember guys, I said in the beginning of this video that his power in Hollywood is unmatched. And actually, just in case, Kesha his mother, Phoebe, claims that there's no jurisdiction in his lawsuit in New York, he goes and files an additional lawsuit. On October 29th, 2014, Dr. Luke files that defamation lawsuit against Kesha's mother, Phoebe, in the state of Tennessee. So far, Kesha has filed a lawsuit against Dr. Luke, and Dr. Luke came back guns blazing, filing a bunch of lawsuits against Kesha, her mother, and her team. But things get a lot more complicated come December that year. On December 2nd, 2014, Lady Gaga went onto the Howard Stern show, and she revealed that a producer harmed her physically when she was 19 years old. You know what? You could never ever degrade me as much as I could degrade myself and look how beautiful it is when I do. Were, are you keep alluding to the, were, were you by a record producer? Was that I, what happened I to don't, you? I don't want to I don't want to. Uh, I feel that happened to Happy you. times. Let's talk about no, happy but, but things. Gaga or uh, LG <laughs> what, what, Seriously what? Don't call me a lady when we talk about <laughs> power. <laughs> no but seriously it's a serious topic for a second. And, it is and a serious topic. When you talk topic. about depression and pain and you're talking about I mean, you're talking about producers who have done things to you, and you said you, you barely got into a studio where you weren't in a weird, dangerous situation. After that interview went live, the public went into a frenzy because, oh my gosh, what, Lady Gaga was harmed by who? And people were wondering who this man was. Actually, Kesha's former lawyer decided to go to Twitter and tweet out that Lady Gaga was talking about Dr. Luke, which both Lady Gaga and Dr. Luke deny. And actually, Dr. Luke filed a defamation lawsuit against this lawyer, Mark, because of that tweet. One day after that interview with Lady Gaga and Howard Stern went live, on December 3rd, Kesha's mom, Phoebe, actually countersues Dr. Luke for causing her PTSD and says that she 
has to be medicated due to the stress of his alleged harm against her daughter. This brings us to 2015, and honestly things were pretty quiet in the beginning of 2015, not too much action, but come June, everything picks up again, because Kesha actually decides to add Sony to her lawsuit against Dr. Luke, claiming that they had full knowledge of what he was doing, and they allowed her to be in a place of danger. In that lawsuit, she also includes one other victim of Dr. Luke's, but she doesn't mention who that victim is at that time. In September of that year, Kesha files an emergency injunction request in New York to be released from her record contract with Dr. Luke, claiming that her career will not recover from this and that it's time to release her until her case against him involving the SA is ruled on. She wants to be able to record and release new music, but during this battle, she can't do that. And actually, at this point, Sony speaks out against the case and claims that they feel like they're just caught in the crossfire. And actually, they want the whole lawsuit that Kesha has filed against Sony to be dismissed and claims that her suit is a transparent and misguided attempt to renegotiate her contracts. Just claiming that Kesha wants to just go and, you know, redo her contracts. And that's why she wants this lawsuit pretty much dismissing everything about the essay and what Dr. Luke put her through. Kesha was really struggling at this time, and I'm sure her mental health was at an all-time low, but she did get some good news in February 2016, because actually Dr. Luke's lawsuit against her mother and her manager Jack was thrown out due to lack of jurisdiction. But Kesha's mother, Phoebe, has been outspoken on Twitter at this time and claiming that Dr. Luke is still up to his old tactics. Phoebe tweeted out that Dr. Luke is trying to blackmail me into taking my name off of Timber as a songwriter by blocking all 16 writers from being paid. So this man is stopping is stopping the payment for 16 writers until Phoebe agrees to take her name off of Timber as a songwriter. So you've got 16 really angry songwriters looking at Phoebe, waiting for her to give up her rights so that Dr. Luke can what? Just like take, I guess, money from Phoebe or just kind of screw her over? She also tweets, Now, two years since Timber was a hit, my punishment for telling the truth about him is to be responsible for everyone not being paid. That is extremely screwed up. Those are the type of evil tactics that powerful people in Hollywood would do. They will go and make you feel guilty for a bunch of people not getting paid for what? So they can remove your name off of a credit? They will do anything in their power to make your life a living hell. And actually, Kesha was still living in hell at this point. And her recent filing to try to get out of her record label... It was no good. Actually, the judge denied it and said that she needs to stay in her record label and also claims that Sony and Dr. Luke haven't stopped her from actually going and recording music. So why is she acting like this? At this particular court hearing, Kesha was seen sobbing because she wanted out of her record label. And actually, there were fans outside protesting for free Kesha to get her out of this label with Sony. Kesha's lawyers argued that this promise from Sony that she can go and, you know, just record music without Dr. Luke wasn't legit. And actually, they would not even promote her music if she were to go and record it. But Sony denied that. That court hearing was a big loss for Kesha and the world was watching. They watched as this singer was sobbing in court, wanting another chance to go and make music without a man that she claims harmed her. But Sony and the big record labels, they just keep on winning, winning, and winning. But a lot of people started supporting Kesha, and the free Kesha movement was really picking up. Actually, other celebrities were starting to support Kesha publicly. Lady Gaga was actually one of the biggest artists at the time to go and support Kesha so publicly and befriend her over this situation. Lady Gaga tweeted out this, There are people all over the world who love you, Kesha, and I can truly say I am in awe of your bravery. Lady Gaga also went to Instagram to show her support for Kesha. And it seems like there was a lot happening behind the scenes. Actually, we know that there was a lot happening behind the scenes because later on, there's going to be text messages that are leaked from Kesha and Lady Gaga talking about Katie 
Perry. But I want to play this really cute clip of Lady Gaga talking about Kesha. It's actually from another YouTube channel. I will link them below. But watch this clip because I truly believe that Lady Gaga actually cared for Kesha's well-being. Somebody that has such a beautiful light within them, to see that light burn out because they feel that no one's listening to them. I was by a music producer. Part of me shut down for many years. I avoided it myself and felt shame. After I shared what happened to me, nobody helped me. You think that you deserve to be hurt. You, don't, you think you don't deserve happiness. I just want to stand by her side because I can't watch another woman that went through what I have been through suffer. I talk to her every day. I'm friends with her personally. And what I'm watching her go through is not only something I've been through, but something that's really devastating to witness. That clip makes me emotional because it is so powerful to see these two women in the music industry standing together. And the fact that Lady Gaga is going over and trying to rescue Kesha is everything. I mean, the media loves to push these feuds between celebrities, but when we see them actually come together, it is so magical. But not everyone was happy for Kesha. On February 20th, 2016, Demi Lovato tweeted out, hashtag free Kesha. This is only going to make you stronger. You brave and beautiful girl, prayers are with you. Even though Demi Lovato was trying to publicly support Kesha, they made some really nasty comments about how Taylor Swift donated a quarter million dollars to Kesha, which was really nice of Taylor Swift because she recognized that Kesha was in a really expensive legal battle against some of the most powerful entities in the industry. So bless Taylor Swift for donating that money, but Demi Lovato didn't like it. In reference to Taylor's donation, Demi Lovato said, take something to Capitol Hill or actually speak out about something and then I'll be impressed. They also went to Instagram and wrote, how the F am I making this about myself? At least I'm talking about it. Not everyone has 250K to just give people. Would love to, but I didn't grow up with money and Def hasn't made as much as her. At least I speak up about crap that's uncomfortable to talk about rather than trying to be politically correct 24-7. Demi was later quoted saying, I didn't shade Taylor. If you take it that way, then fine. I'm just tired of seeing women use women empowerment and feminism to further their brands without actually being the ones that have the uncomfortable conversations. On Instagram, Demi clarified that there's no feud here. I just give more Fs than other people and would rather start a dialogue about women coming forward about being R-worded than throw money at one person. And finally, Demi was quoted saying, I get shade and I don't give an F because someone has to be the one to take it. At least I'm getting my hands dirty. Can someone please explain to me why Demi Lovato is so personally affected by Taylor Swift donating money to Kesha? It was such an unnecessary like fight to have there and nobody was even fighting with them back. But there were other stars like Ariana Grande who tweeted out in support of Kesha and actually Adele had a really cute moment at an award show where she shouted out Kesha at the end of her acceptance speech. To thank my management and my record label for embracing the fact that I'm a woman and being encouraged by it. And I'd also like to take this moment to publicly support Kesha. Thank you very much. So now that everyone is talking about the Kesha and Dr. Luke situation and hashtag free Kesha, Dr. Luke finally addresses the situation publicly. He tweeted out, I did not R word Kesha and I have never had any, you know, relations with her. Kesha and I were friends for many years and she was like my little sister. He also claims that Kesha and her mother, they are getting behind an allegation only motivated by money, claiming that these two are just trying to get his money and that this whole story that Kesha has brought up is just Fake. And then on February 24th of that year, a lot happening in that month, Kesha decided to release a letter to her fans. She releases an emotional letter thanking her fans for their continued support. She also responds to Dr. Luke's extortion claims, saying that this case has never been about renegotiation of her record contract. 
It was never about getting a bigger or better deal. This is about being free from Dr. Luke. I would be willing to work with Sony if they do the right thing and break all ties that bind me to him. The day after Kesha released her letter, fans actually planned a protest outside of Sony's headquarters to free Kesha. But at that point, Sony releases a statement that they have no plans to go and release Kesha from her record label, which just infuriates the movement even more. I'm grateful that you open up a platform for this discussion um, to receive the attention that it deserves and also creating space for women whose stories are constantly ignored. You know, if she was here right now, I'd give her the biggest hug. I'd probably burst into tears too, but you know, I give her the biggest hug and tell her that, you know, we're not going to stop fighting for her until she's freed. On March 7th of that year, Kelly Clarkson actually decides to jump in the mix because she was at a radio interview and she told the host that she was actually blackmailed by Sony into working with Dr. Luke, which is crazy because at the beginning of this video, we talk about the fact that Dr. Luke worked with Kelly Clarkson on the song Since You've Been Gone, and that's something that she didn't want to actually do, but she was blackmailed by Sony. She also told the radio host at this time that Dr. Luke is not a good guy, which you guys could just imagine what has happened between Kelly and Dr. Luke from that statement. A few weeks after that interview with Kelly Clarkson, Kesha is back in the courtroom. On March 21st, Kesha officially appeals the judge's denial of her injunction for freedom from her recording contract. She says that the ruling upholds a form of slavery and forcing her to work for a company and a man that she no longer wants to have anything to do with. And honestly, I'm sure there was a lot going on behind the scenes, like when it comes to Kesha dealing with Sony and things that we don't even know because actually a little bit later a few weeks later Kesha goes to Instagram and she reveals some damning information on April 3rd Kesha revealed on Instagram that Dr. Luke offered her a deal to release her from her record contract if she agreed to recant the accusations against him Kesha refused the deal saying that she would rather let the truth ruin her career than lie for a monster ever again I have a feeling because of how Kesha said I will never lie for a monster ever again, that she probably regrets that 2011 deposition where she said that he never did harm her because that's something that Dr. Luke really uses against her and something that I'm sure haunts her to this day. But the judge was not appreciative of Kesha trying to go and appeal their denial, and they claim that Kesha is acting unreasonably, which doesn't make sense to me. Like, what type of judge is over here telling her that she has to be in this contract and she has to work with with this man, he doesn't care for her well-being at all. But at this point in Kesha's life, she's trying to rebuild her music career. So she actually performs at Coachella and Dylan Fest. She ends up releasing a song with Zed, and she also announced a tour with Major Lazer. Kesha also had another win because she found out on May 22nd that she's going to be able to go and perform at the Billboard Music Awards after Dr. Luke tried to block her from singing at the show. He was trying to stop her at every corner and really just end her career. But she came through and her performance was beautiful. And I call me each time you call A lover for your life now that brings us to August, and I just want to remind you guys what's going on legally. So right now, Kesha has two lawsuits. She's got one in California. This one is like uh, regarding the whole R word in that night at Nikki Hilton's birthday. And then she's got another one in New York City. This is the one that's trying to get her out of her contract with Dr. Luke. Well, come August 1st, actually, Kesha decides to drop her lawsuit in California. It's been stalled, and it's just not getting anywhere. She ends up delivering 28 songs to her label, which she financed all herself, and she's putting all of her energy into that New York case, trying to get herself out of this record label. 
So that California lawsuit being thrown out was a major win for Dr. Luke. I mean, that lawsuit had claims that he R-worded Kesha, which was awful for his reputation. But he wasn't done with Kesha and her mom yet, because on September 1st of that year, he decides to go and sue Kesha's mom once again. The reason why he's suing Phoebe again is because he claims that she didn't allow him to amend his original suit with new complaints, but has continued to make defamatory comments about his alleged uh the incident where he r-worded kesha it seems like dr luke is really set on clearing his name and getting these women in trouble for defamation because the following year in 2017 he threatens to go and sue kesha again so in this filing dr luke is threatening to sue her over a text message exchange between kesha and lady gaga where kesha supposedly told lady gaga that dr luke Luke R worded another artist. At the same time, Kesha accused Dr. Luke of being unsupportive of her music and refusing to approve any songs, a release date, or agree to promote it. She also claims that Dr. Luke financially cut her off and never paid her for the song Timber. You guys might be wondering, what are these text messages between Kesha and Lady Gaga? We actually know what they are because I've already done my research and I looked ahead of time, so these text messages weren't actually released to the public yet. But here is a summary of them, and you guys can pause to read, but pretty much K is Kesha and LG is Lady Gaga, and Kesha reveals to Lady Gaga that someone told them, I guess, that Katy Perry was R-worded by Dr. Luke, throwing another megastar into this complicated situation. Fortunately, Kesha isn't backing down, as she should, and actually she goes on to reveal some information about Dr. Luke. On February 15th, Kesha releases emails from Dr. Luke that she says supports her claims that he emotionally harmed her. And in these emails, it appears that Dr. Luke is trying to intimidate Kesha into dieting, saying A-list songwriters and producers are reluctant to give Kesha their songs because of her weight which is disgusting, but Dr. Luke claims that the emails were taken out of context. There's no way in my mind that that email could have been taken out of context because what type of context would even make that situation better? That's actually disgusting. And looking at these emails, they're pretty damning and they show how toxic Sony is. In this email, Kesha's manager, Jack, wrote that she seems like someone who's doing drugs. So erratic. A couple hours, all is going well. Now she wants to dump the whole lot. This doesn't feel right, even with Kesha's standards. And another member of Kesha's management team responds, she is nuts. In these emails, Kesha's management team also discussed about the singer going back to rehab for a tune-up. Also, there's this email from Dr. Luke, which I guess is supposed to make him look good, but he just compliments her on how she looks, saying that, I know you said you look like a lesbo, but I disagree. You looked radiant and beautiful, which seems like a form of manipulation to me. On March 21st, Kesha gets another big loss in court because that same judge again denied her request to get out of her contract and claims that she just, you know, needs to fulfill it, that there's no getting out of it, and that Sony is in the right here. Even though Dr. Luke, this producer, harmed you on multiple occasions, you have to continue working with him. The judge is so incredibly disrespectful to Kesha. In this article, they write, the judge appears to imply that Kesha should have known that signing with Dr. Luke put her at risk. Keep in mind that she was a young artist when she signed with Dr. Luke, and it also seems like he used some manipulative tactics to pressure her not into, like, not into only signing with him, but to continue working with him and not speaking out against him. Remember how Dr. Luke went back to Tennessee to try to sue Kesha's mom, Phoebe, again? Well, on June 23rd, Dr. Luke loses again because the judge throws out the case and Kesha's mom puts out a statement claiming that she had no idea what her daughter was going through when it came to Dr. Luke and that um, it's just a bunch of BS that he's trying to sue her for defamation. But Kesha was back to making music because on July 6th, she released her first single, Praying, which was a hit and the world was paying attention to her and her music once again. At the same time, Kesha also announces that her album Rainbow will be coming out later on that year. 
But the legal battle isn't slowing down at all, and it actually got a lot more complicated at the end of July. So Dr. Luke subpoenas Lady Gaga in his defamation case over the text messages that Kesha sent to him, accusing him of R-wording Katy Perry. According to Dr. Luke's team, the texts that Lady Gaga provided were so heavily redacted, it wasn't, you could not even tell what was going on here. Lady Gaga actually hit back in a statement that says, Dr. Luke's team is attempting to manipulate the truth and draw press attention to their case by exaggerating Lady Gaga's role and falsely accusing her of dodging reasonable requests. Later on, Page Six reported that a Manhattan Supreme Court justice ruled that Kesha did defame Dr. Luke back in February 2016 when she texted Lady Gaga that he R-worded fellow pop star Katy Perry. In the 2017 defamation case, Dr. Luke sued Kesha for allegedly lying when she claimed that Dr. Luke drugged and R-worded her. In court, Dr. Luke claimed that Kesha texted Lady Gaga that he allegedly R-worded Katy Perry in an attempt to boost Kesha's own case against him. The case which Dr. Luke refers to is Kesha's explosive 2014 lawsuit in which she sued Dr. Luke for essay and battery. She ultimately dropped the case in August 2016 like we discussed earlier, in a deposition in 2019, Katy Perry actually denied that she's ever been essayed by Dr. Luke. That same justice also ordered that Kesha must pay Dr. Luke over $373,000. And not only does she have to go and pay him, but also that justice went and rejected and denied Kesha's counterclaim against Dr. Luke, trying to get out of her contract with Sony. So Kesha is just stuck. Dr. Luke's lawyer actually released this statement. Dr. Luke is pursuing this lawsuit to seek recovery for the serious harm Kesha's false accusation accusations of our word have caused Dr. Luke, his family, and his business. She continued that Dr. Luke looks forward to the trial of his case where he will prove that Kesha's other false statements about him were false and defamatory, which is a scary lawsuit to be in. After that court hearing, Kesha's lawyers put out a statement claiming that they disagreed with what the court had to say and that they're going to appeal everything. We also find out on August 8th that actually Sony and Dr. Luke will be profiting off of Kesha's next album called High Road. I personally believe that what happened to Kesha is fact and that that is her truth. But I can also understand how Dr. Luke has a case of defamation here because everyone was talking about Dr. Luke and they weren't talking kindly. Actually, the singer Pink had an interview with the New York Times and she said that she will never work with Dr. Luke again. I know that regardless regardless of whether or not Dr. Luke did that, that this is his karma and he earned it because he's not a good person. It was really eerie to review Pink's statement on Dr. Luke because it was so similar to what Kelly Clarkson had to say during her radio interview. But at this time, Kesha was doing all right, actually. She had a huge breakthrough performance on January 28th, 2018, where she performed her song Praying on the Grammy stage. The world was rooting for Kesha. I mean, everyone was so happy to go and see her back on that stage, but she was still struggling in the courtroom. So remember, her lawyers went to go and appeal everything that the judge ruled on. Well, on May 29th of 2018, there was a major setback because actually... The New York appeals court sides with the judge's ruling that Kesha is not permitted to make any further appeals to be released from her contract with Dr. Luke and Sony. Because the court case ended, all of this information was released to the public. So actually in June of that year, the unredacted text messages between Kesha and Lady Gaga went public, revealing that Kesha did say that she thought that Dr. Luke R worded Katy Perry, but then Katy Perry went on to continue confirmed that that never really happened, which wasn't really great for Kesha's case and further made Dr. Luke look innocent. On June 15th, Kesha's lawyers attempted to clarify the source of the Katy Perry essay allegation, claiming an unnamed record label head had initially told both Kesha and Lady Gaga about the incident. On August 27th, Katy Perry's deposition is released with a number of other testimonies from Dr. Luke's ongoing defamation case against 
against Kesha. According to the heavily redacted deposition given in 2017, Katy Perry denies that she's ever been essayed by Dr. Luke, an accusation that Lady Gaga and Kesha attributed to a unnamed music label CEO. Court documents identify the CEO as John Janik, who says that he does not recall hearing or spreading rumors about Katy Perry. However, Lady Gaga maintains in her deposition that John brought up the rumor to both she and Kesha during a meeting. Dr. Luke's team responds by issuing a statement claiming that Kesha's allegation against the producer is part of a malicious design to destroy Dr. Luke's business and reputation. On November 30th is when we actually get the text message exchange between Lady Gaga and Kesha, and during this exchange, they actually call Katy Perry mean, and Kesha talks about being upset with Katy Perry for not coming forward about the allegation that she was R-worded by Dr. Luke because she feels like she needed that extra support. Thank God that Lady Gaga was there for Kesha because it feels like everyone was against her. And actually, later on, when files were released, it reveals how supportive Lady Gaga was. According to Lady Gaga's deposition released on January 30th, Lady Gaga was in tears during the testimony, which her lawyer attributes to the singer experiencing PTSD from her own essay. Lady Gaga began the deposition by recounting how she had first met Kesha in Dr. Luke's home studio and that Kesha had been in the back room wearing only her underwear. Lady Gaga actually claims that moment meeting him in that back room and seeing the state of Kesha really like sealed her opinion of this man and that she's standing with Kesha. As for Kesha's music, we're in the year 2019. So in June, she actually posts a song on YouTube titled Rich White Straight Men, which we all believe is about Dr. Luke. What if rich white straight men didn't rule the world anymore? <laughs> On October 21st, Kesha reveals that her album High Road is coming out and that it has a more positive outlook on everything because Rainbow was a really depressing album for her. When I wrote Rainbow, I was in a very different headspace. I had to address some very serious things. But now, on my new record, I revisit my roots of pure and utter debaucherous joy. In January of 2020, her album comes out, and it's still all being recorded and supported by RCA and Dr. Luke's team, so they're making a pretty penny off of Kesha, and she really has no choice but to either stop music completely or to work with this contract with this awful man. But in February 2020, the case is reignited again. It seems like this Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Jennifer just doesn't like Kesha because she rules that Kesha did defame Dr. Luke in that text message exchange with Lady Gaga. Even though Kesha's team planned on appealing this ruling, it still wasn't a great look for Kesha or a win for her, and it seems like this justice that she's working with isn't going to get her anywhere. That brings us to 2021. And trust me, guys, there are still things going on with this case. On April 6th of this year, Kesha's lawyer files papers in the Manhattan Supreme Court arguing that the New York's anti-slap free speech law should be applied to her case. The law is designed to prevent wealthy people from filing frivolous lawsuits to intimidate and to stifle free speech, which is exactly what Dr. Luke was like doing. This law was actually signed by Andrew Cuomo, who he's got his own pass, but it was signed in November 2020. So now that this new law is enacted, it looks like Kesha might have a chance against Dr. Luke. This law is really specific though, because this person, whoever's intimidating you, has to be a public figure, and you have to prove that, which is something that Kesha and her lawyers weren't able to prove, which is kind of bizarre to me, because Dr. Luke seems like as much of a public figure as you could be. On April 22nd of this year, the New York court upholds the lower court ruling from 2020 that Dr. Luke is not a public figure. But two of the seven judges dissent on the grounds that he is a public figure because they believe that he is, which I do too. I mean, he's verified on Twitter. The court also affirms that Kesha's text to Lady Gaga was defamatory and that Kesha can be held liable for statements made by her lawyer and press agent. 
you guys are probably wondering, Sloane, like, so did, did Kesha get her justice? Like, was this a win for Kesha and, you know, the Me Too movement? And in short, no, it really wasn't because Kesha never got her justice and Dr. Luke has just gotten away with it all. Whether it was the lawsuit in California where he supposedly R-worded her or the whole lawsuit in uh, New York where she's trapped in her contract, he continues to win, win, win. But it wasn't all losses for Kesha because she created a movement, a movement where other singers feel inclined to go and speak out against these producers. I mean, it's still so brave to this day that Kesha did all of that, and she's still making music. So in my perspective, she's done everything she can do to try to defend herself and to try to get justice. So that's a huge win in my opinion. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Here is my email. If you guys have any other video ideas, you guys sent me emails wanting me to talk about this, and I thought it was a great idea. It took me forever to do research for this, but it's an incredible story that I believe is going to continue. And if there are any other court hearings or any updates, like I will be here to update you guys. But let's go ahead and open a P.O. Box package item. I've got like this big one over here. Hold on, let me grab it. Oh my gosh. Look how big this is. The P.O. Box people were like, what is that? And I was like, honestly, I don't even know. It's like lagging. It's so big. Um, but let's go ahead and open this. It looks like it might be a rug, which is so random. It says rugs for you, which I'm so excited because, oh my gosh, a rug. I'm so excited. So let's go ahead and see what is in here. Is this lagging? I feel like this is lagging. Like, why is my computer? I've been like filming for actually like two hours. So my computer is probably like, leave me alone, Sloan. But let's go ahead and see. Oh, <gasps> what is this? Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what is on here. So, um, it looks like there is a note, which is awesome. Okay, Sloan, custom rug. Oh, it doesn't really say who it's from or anything. Oh my gosh, who sent me this? This is so nice. Is it the company that sent it to me? Rugs? Oh wait, there's, there's a letter, there's a letter. Oh my gosh, okay. Here we go, rugs for you. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, um... And they've got some business cards, so definitely go and check out the rug company. Everything will be listed below. Hey Sloan, rugs for you. Have been a fan of your YouTube channel for quite some time. We enjoy your content, and we're always looking forward to your next upload for entertainment information and news on celebrities. We love that you focus so much on the positive, and we love how genuine you are aww, when wanting to help others. Please continue to spread love and share the importance of being an enforcer for positive change. We hope you love the new decor for your home. Always remember that we'll always have the rugs for you oh my gosh so sweet i'm actually really excited like look at this brand it's so legit and cute so let's go ahead and check this out oh my gosh guys this is like definitely one of the most interesting things i've ever opened on camera before and this is definitely gonna go right in my youtube room like i love that like i'm so excited to like own a house one day and actually have like a youtube room because ugh, i just love you guys and i love the things that you send me and like i just think it's so awesome especially the custom things that have my name on it so let's go ahead and see what's going on here oh oh my gosh, <gasps> SL04N, look at that rug. Oh my gosh, it feels really great, really high quality. And look how awesome this is. Oh my gosh, this is so special to me. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have this for the rest of my life. This is so iconic, holy crap. Wow, thank you so much rugs for us. Definitely go check them out. It looks like you can go and get custom rugs like this one, which is so sweet. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Thank you so much rugs for us. All their information will be listed below. Thank you so much for being a fan. And I love that you have this like, oh my gosh, I'm just, it's so unexpected. So thank you so much. If you guys ever want to send me anything to my PO box and everything's listed below, but this has me speechless. So thank you guys so much for enjoying this video. I know it was a long one, so I will see you guys in a new one soon. Bye guys.